Oh, thank y'all so much. I, I've got my little buddy with me, so, so I know y'all would a whole lot rather see a baby dog than me. Chicken nuggets when we leave here. <laughs> well, I appreciate uh, I appreciate all of you coming. Uh, it's a great room of people. It's an incredible city. It's an incredible incredible area of the state, and we've got some exciting news to talk to you about today, and answer any of your questions. Now, with that being said, you know it's really great. Even though it held us up just a little bit, it's really great to see all the work that's going on in, in the town. And, uh, and, and we are, we're going to spin around a few times like we did with all the I-70 work with the bridges, and it's done. You know, it's amazing when you think about how fast time just goes. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, I, I, I was, you know, when we started down the pathway on the highway projects, you know, I thought, well, you know, you hate to say this, but dag, they take forever. And it seems like they're never going to get done. And you're telling people, well, we're going to do this and it's going to get done in three years, you know. And then before you know it, you just, like I said, you just spin around a couple times and Lo and behold, it's here. And so that's really good. Now, we've got an incredible, incredible announcement to make. And we've got the Nutting family that's here. And you all know the contribution of this family is off the chart. You know, absolutely, we're going to award a distinguished West Virginian today to a lady that is unbelievable. You know, I know oftentimes she's referred to as Snooky. You know, and in my world, she's got to be Betty. But uh, absolutely, with all in us, you know, and I know Ogden's here. I know, you know, Bill and Bob are here. And and if you could come up, please, or I'll come to you. And uh, we've got Randall, wherever Randall is, is going to bring me our distinguished West Virginian. Where's Randall? I hope you didn't run off a leave. She said, you're such a big boy, and she's right, but, uh, but if we could, let's, let's, let's move over this way, just a little teeny bit, okay, and I'm going to. I'm going to sit right here so we're about on the same level. And you sit right beside me and baby dog. And Randall, let's do this. This, this is the highest award that a governor can give in the state of West Virginia. And you may think, well, we just pass these out like candy and that's not the case. In my entire time, we've probably given away 15 of these and everything. And so it is a special award to an incredible, incredible family and this unbelievable lady. So God bless you in every way. And it's our Distinguished West Virginian Award, and it is to Betty Woods Snooky Nutter. Thank you all so much. I know that you've uh, listened to Secretary Hardy. He is our Secretary of Revenue. He's the guy that really him and his team of, of lots and lots and lots of folks 
put numbers together. And we try all kinds of different ways and scenarios and everything to do this and that and everything else. And at the end of the day, I always tell them just this. I want real numbers. I want conservative numbers. I want numbers to where there's no way on earth we're going to put our state, our services that we provide, nothing at risk. Well, so at the end of the day, here we are. Here we are in West Virginia in this incredible town. Now, like it or not like it, but it is honest to goodness truth. Are, are a bunch of you guys students? Are you from Wheeling and students? Wheeling and Jesuit? You know, are any of you athletes? The la one of the last times I was there, is Jenny here by any chance? Is she here? Well, nevertheless, I, I got, just got a note from her and everything, but... Uh, one of the last times I was there, you know, the school was really in real jeopardy. And I'm not, don't get me wrong now, I'm not here to toot my horn in any way. But it is so instrumental to this community, and it is such an incredible school. You know, many of you probably would never know this in a billion years, but I took classes from Wheeling Jesuit, and... And, and it, are we still wheeling Jesuit? We're just wheeling? Okay, university. Okay, forgive me. But I took classes, you know, and the reason I did, I took them online, and there was a Dr. Jones in the education department, and he, he was teaching those classes and everything. And the reason I was doing that is because at the time I was coaching, but at that time, you know, I had my MBA and all that bit, but I didn't have a true blue teaching certificate. So I went through all the gyrations and everything to make sure and get all that in place and everything 500 years ago. But what a school. And I got to go there a bunch of times. And I got to see a lot of all the goodness that goes on there all the time. The last time I was there, you know, there was a movement to close the school. And you see, I'm eat up against that stuff. And if there's any way on the planet to not pull that off, that's what I wanted to have happen. I told Jenny that not on my watch would that school be closed. And literally, I've tried really, really hard. With all that, the football team, when it went outside and the football team, outside, we took a picture together. And, uh, and I, I can tell you many stories about athletics because you know I coach and I love being with kids and everything. My daughter, I've got to tell you this real quick, and it relates to a football team. A lot of the same kind of kids were there that day. But my daughter was recruited by Clemson to play basketball. And so as soon as she graduated from high school, you know, in like two days, like on June the 3rd, we had to go to Clemson. And she enrolled at that time, and, and, and off they went. Well, all that being said, you know, at the time, there was probably three ladies or women's basketball kids, and there was maybe, you know, two tennis players and maybe four men's basketball, and there was about 25 football recruits that were coming into Clemson. This is in June, early, early June. And it was so hot, it was unflat believable. And I mean, it was hot. And so I'm standing there in shorts and just sweating like, like crazy and everything. And they're taking these 50 kids or so around and showing them all the different things that they're going to do for them. And they're going to do everything under the sun. Believe me, be at Clemson, they're doing everything for every, everybody. And so as they're doing all that, there's two giant guys there from Georgia. And they're both probably either defensive or offensive linemen, and they're massive. One of them a black guy, one of them a white guy, and they're both standing right beside me, and they keep looking at me and everything. And I'm just standing there by myself. This is the God's truth. If I die, I'm telling you the truth. And finally, now this is 20 years ago. I don't did look a whole lot different, but maybe a little bit. And finally, they just kept looking at me and looking at me, and I said, 
Guys, I know I started a little late, but I'm going to be with you this fall. <laughs> now, and I didn't crack a smile. I didn't do nothing. And literally, you know, I kept just kind of glancing out of my corner of my eye and everything, and they kept looking and looking, and they'd look up and down one side, up and down me and everything. And finally, I turned around, and the big, giant, white kid from, from uh, Georgia, he looked right at me. He said, we were glad to have you. <laughs> so, so nevertheless, uh, I'll never forget being with those football players right here at Wheeling University. It was really good stuff, great stuff. So, so uh, let me tell you, you have an incredible community. You have been really, really good to me. I have told you the truth every single time that I've ever addressed you, and I will to my grave. I am telling you today we have an exciting, exciting time in West Virginia. We're two-thirds of the way home. The House voted 95 to 2. You know, to be perfectly honest, we've still got folks that are still hung up on Amendment 2 and, and, and you know, and whatever it may be, personalities and everything else, and we need to get over it. Literally, at the end of the day, we need to get all at about right now doing stuff to help our people. You know, the absolute fact of the matter is no matter how many times that Dave Hardy says it and tells you how, how other states are growing, we're not growing or we're barely growing. We're barely growing. You know, if you believe somebody trying to scare you and saying if we do this we're not going to be able to provide services or that and, and it, believe me B, all you've got to do is remember just one thing and like it or not like it but this is just fact and I, I don't know how to tell you anything but the truth when I'm a business guy now I'm a business guy and when I walked in the door like it or not like it but West Virginia was bankrupt guys it was dead level bankrupt. We had already drained a rainy day fund down to the point in time where our bonds were being derated. We didn't have anywhere to turn but one place, cut. And the more we cut, the more people left. That's all there is to it. And the more people that leave, they take their income with them, they take their taxation with them, and absolutely we just kept dragging the hole right with us. Now, we've changed a lot of stuff, and absolutely, I give you tons of credit. This is not just a Jim Justice show. Surely, you had to have a coach, maybe. But literally, we've all pulled the rope together, and we got then dealt a cannonball with COVID and everything else under the sun. We have pulled the rope together, and we are on a rocket ship ride right now. Absolutely, you say what you want, but this state is so different today than it has ever been, and it is going right now. Now, with all that being said, to me, it is just as simple as this. If you look at any tax publication known to man, they would say, give the money back to the people. For God's sakes of living, give the money to the people. If you lower the personal income tax, and absolutely, which would be a blessing from God above, if you could ever get rid of the personal income tax in its entirety in West Virginia, lo and behold, they'd come beyond belief. If we make this move on the chessboard, for all practical purposes, we'll have a lower income tax in all the bordering states all the way around us. And today, I think we've almost got the highest. Is that correct? No wonder they live right across the board. You know, wherever it may be. Literally, at the end of the day, if we want to drive growth here, if we want to fill these vacant stores, if we want our communities to really come back to life, you have to have lots of things. But one surefire, dead level, positive thing is the income tax. It's all there is to it. I don't care what you say. It's all there is to every publication in the world is going to tell you, you lower your personal income tax, and if we don't, 
And let me just tell you this, the Federal Reserve was in my office not long ago. They looked right at me and they said, what is wrong with the legislature in West Virginia? And I said, this was way before the House got on board and we all voted and everything. And I'm not here to cast any stone, but the Federal Reserve, which is unbiased as they can be, now they can't absolutely have a party affiliation, the Federal Reserve said, do you realize what an opportunity that you have in West Virginia? You're within a rock throw of two-thirds of the population of this country. That's all there is to it. They drive through you to get to a state that doesn't have income tax. And do you realize that it's South Carolina and it's Georgia and it's Mississippi and they're all next. And Kentucky, they're all next. And are we going to just wait? Are you going to wait when you have an opportunity like we have today? So let me do this. Let me ask any of your questions, answer, answer your questions as best I possibly can. And if I can't, Secretary Hardy will. Now, and if we can't answer a question, and let's try to do this. Let's try to have everybody out of here as quickly as we can because sometimes these meetings drag on. You know, we get, we get questions about any, and I'd answer anything you want me to do. And Baby Dog and I will sit right here when we're done. And if you want to come up and say hi to Baby Dog, you are glad I'll stay right here with you. But absolutely, a lot of people, because they have great manners and everything, don't want to just get up and walk out. And they've got their lunch hour, and they want to be here, and then they want to leave. So let's keep it as best we possibly can to taxes. And we'll answer any question that, we, that you want us to ask, and we'll answer it as best we possibly can. But absolutely, when, it, when, it, when all is said and done, just think just about this just for a second. By having surpluses, we've been able to compete in the world arena and in the nation arena, national arena on attracting businesses to this state. Can you imagine if Form Energy really, can you imagine what is getting ready to happen in Weirton? Can you imagine? 750 jobs that are going to pay $84,000 plus per job. What is going to happen to Weirton? I mean, I remember when Woodrow Wilson, we lived in Beckley, was playing Weirton in the state finals at the Mountaineer Field House in 1962, and both teams were undefeated. At the highest level of high school basketball you can have in West Virginia. Some way, somehow, Woodrow came back from an unbelievable deficit and won. Two years later, they were playing in the, in, in, in the semifinals of the high school basketball tournament, and the people from Weirton were chanting, we remember 62, you'll remember 64, and they blistered Woodrow and everything. Literally, what do you think these moves on the chessboard, you know, will really do to all of our communities? It will be unbelievable. What do you think a move on the chessboard where you put a billion dollars back in the hands of all West Virginians, what do you think the multiplier effect of those dollars would be and we'll spend it and we'll spend it here? It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. What a chance. Now all baby dog and I can do is tell you and do what we've done. Mind the store the right way. Not bloat government with a bunch of pet projects. Serve. That's what I've done. I don't want anything. I don't want anything. Serve. Do it unselfishly. And do it for all of y'all and all of us. You've absolutely honored me beyond belief with your vote. That's why when, when I could see us going dead in the wrong direction on Amendment 2, I was out here talking to you. That's when I, why when I knew the Roads to Prosperity thing would really kick us off and really get us going, I was out here talking to you. And now I'm out here again. So at the end of the day, now I ask. Ask what you choose, and I'll answer it as best I possibly can. Yes, sir. First of all, thank you for your They probably deserve the votes. Our K-3 classrooms that need help, they need help to teach our kids to read and to do mathematics. We have, I like your idea, we've got to help our poor people, our people who are starving in the state. Uh, we have other needs in the state that we need to cover. We, in Jan, July 1st is coming real quick for us people in the Wheeling area. And you know what I'm talking about. K-3 
can we fix PEI? Can you help our K3 classrooms? Can, can we do all these other things we need to do and still do the task? That's my only concern. Okay. Let me tell you this. And this is where I don't want you to get scared of the dark in the closet. You know, because it's easy for people to plant seeds and everything else. It's a very, very, very legitimate question. Now, just think. Think of all that has been accomplished and all that we've done. Think about what I said here. You, know, you walk in the door and you're bankrupt, and today we're really going. Do you honestly think that Jim Justice, on his watch, on my watch, is going to put our state into any kind of peril that going forward, after my watch or any time, that we're not going to be able to continue to do more and more and more and more goodness along the way for every sector of, of, of what we're doing. There's no way. There's no way I'm going to do that. And absolutely, in our budget, our budget not only, I mean, there's no, I mean, our budget does not contract. Our budget grows. Now, we've, you know, we've minded the store, like I said before, but at the same time, you know, in our budget right now is a, is a big kick, you know, for aides to first grade teachers to absolutely help our kids get off on the right track to be able to learn to read better. You know, there are so many different things for the hungry and on and on and on. You know, we're not going to back up one absolute thread on anything. Nothing. Nothing. Now, there's a need on every street corner for something and anything. But without frivolously throwing money away, we're not going to back up on anything. And without any question in the world, there's no chance on God's earth, there's no chance in the world that I'd be sitting in front of you knowing that this is going to put us at some level of risk to not be able to do things that we need to continue to try to do to help our communities, our schools, our PEIA and everything get better. In our, in our situation right here today, now there is no fix that's been on the table that is a permanent fix forevermore for PEIA. You know, there's some proposals. Well, let's raise the severance on gas just a little bit. Well, and that gets to, to not even to halfway to first base. You know, there's some proposals of what we can do. But absolutely what we can do is what we've already done. And that is we have kept the premiums on PEIA through my watch without being raised, period. The benefits without being raised, without being taken away from, period. In my budget right now, there is an additional $100 million set aside to keep PEIA solid as it can be and going forward. And I would tell you just this, you know, if we want to continue to be able to do that, now there's all kinds of thoughts from the legislature side, you know, on different things that can be done and they need to be looked at. But today, today, you know, what we can do is we can keep PEIA solid and everything with earnings that we have from this state. With, and, and still do every bit of what I'm talking about. Let me just say just this. Now think about this just a second. Dave Hardy's numbers will tell you this. There's three buckets of money. Today there's three huge buckets of money. There's still $550 million or whatever left over from 2022's budget or surplus. There's a billion seven in another bucket that is the 2023 bucket. And in addition to that, there's $477 million of ARPA money. That's why what we said is right off the get-go, in the 2023 bucket, what we want to do with the 2023 thing is take 700 of the billion seven and put it in a bucket set aside for a rainy day of any kind that could happen to PIT, personal income tax. We said of the ARPA money, we want to continue to be able to bring business and opportunity after opportunity here. We want to take $177 million of that and put it in a bucket for sewer and water projects that we can match with federal dollars and spend into a billion dollars to be doing 
all kinds of additional sewer and water projects all across the state. And we want to put 500 million of it over into a bucket that is for economic development to where we can continue to craft things to make it more and more and more competitive for us to bring more and more job opportunity to West Virginia. Now, with all that being said, then after everything washes through, even in the 2023 year, 2023 year, we still end up with an additional $400 million that's completely unappropriate. Literally. We have been through these numbers every way you can be through them. We can sit and say, well, well, you know, what if, and what if, and what if, and what if? And we've done that, and we've done that an awful lot. And I admire you for thinking that way. But at the end of the day, I truly believe without any question, if you've got 50% of your money back in your pockets as far as your personal income tax money, you'll make the right decisions. You'll make the right decisions. Yes, ma'am. saying makes all the sense in the world. I, I can't understand why that you're having trouble getting someone to call you back. I mean, that, that, that doesn't make a bit of sense to me. But Dave, can you, can you expand? On? You should always get a call back from the state tax department. And the state tax department is under my jurisdiction. So if you would get with me here in a few minutes and give me your name and your information, I will promise you, you will get a call back and I'll probably be on the call with the person that calls you back. And w without knowing details, but I can help you navigate through. Is it the state tax department or is it Ohio County or which county are you? Okay. Okay. 
No. No, almost all of that goes to the county government and the public schools through the Department of Education. But still, you should always get a call back, and, and I have hammered that home over and over so to the state tax department. So I want to get your information. Okay? Uh, one more thing. Uh, talk to a good friend of mine who got in this gas business years ago. His name is Dale Sanders. Okay? He owns a feed store or whatever. All right? He's told me there's a lot of people that have called for the same question I called with the other day. He told me there's actually a lady that takes two months before she reads see the check is 25 bucks. But yet, she's getting appraised for $8,000. So, it's, it's little people who are getting killed. By that. Um, I want to help you cut through all the red tape. So if you give me the information, I'll get you the answer. Okay? I have a similar question that I don't know how to say it any better than this, you know, but in my first day in the state, I said, we've got to make education our centerpiece. First thing I said, you know. Now, along the way, there's been lots of stuff happening. There really has. I mean, there's been historic pay raises, boom, 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 right? One right after, right after the, another, you know. You may think, well, okay, so what and everything, but, but. The first 5% pay raise was the biggest pay raise in the history of this state. Then we did it again, then we did it again, and now it's proposed in my budget right now to do it the fourth time. The fourth time since I've been in office and everything. You know, right off the get-go, we were grading our schools. Now imagine this. We were grading our schools on an A through F scale, and we were grading them on a bell curve. Now, why did I say let's make education our centerpiece? Because if you want people to come to West Virginia, the first thing they're going to ask is, how's the schools? Second thing they ask is, how's the roads? I mean, you know, so think about my footprint, what I've tried to do, right, all, all the way through the whole thing. We graded our schools A through F. We were testing every, our kids unnecessarily over and over and over. It's crazy what we were doing and everything. We were grading our schools on a bell curve. A bell curve, some schools were getting A's, some schools were getting F. Most of the schools were in the middle, they were getting C's. So market that for me. Come to West Virginia. Most of our schools are C's. It ain't gonna work, is it? It's just not gonna work. We got rid of that. You know, at the end of the day, there's tons of good going on. We've still got giant hurdles and lots and lots and lots to do. You know, right now we're trying to put dollars over in education and everything to take care of those aids to be able to help what this gentleman was just saying, to be able to help get our kids off faster, you know, and be able to, to you know, help with the first grade stuff and get, get them reading faster and everything. It's on and on and on, an ongoing thing, and it's all over the place. There's, there's, but without any question, we should always remember that some way, somehow, education holds a lot of key to our image and a lot, a lot, a lot of things across this whole land. And at the end of the day, we want people to come here because we know how good it is here, but a lot of people on the outside, we've been the bad end of a lot of jokes, and now that's really changed. And all of a sudden, before you know it, we've become the envy of the world as far as travel and all kinds of things that are happening right here. Yes, sir. Yes, go ahead. I'm going. Uh, I must commend you for what you've done to the uh, economy of West Virginia for the last six years and basically stabilizing it. And also for your effort in leading the uh, fight against COVID. Uh, you did a great job with that. But the tax cut, I'm somewhat concerned. As you know, I did sit on that Senate uh, Finance Committee, which refused the budget. of the workforce 
um, was employed by the state. So wouldn't it be uh, good with money in these people's pockets to help when getting eight percent of the workforce working for the state and losing people? The other concern is that I know in Kansas they tried this and all of a sudden it was uh, somewhat of a disaster. Uh, what lessons did you learn from uh, the tax cut, a personal tax cuts in Kansas? Okay, let me let me tell you this. First of all, think about it. Last year, there was a locality pay bill that went up to the legislature and it got shot down on basically correctional officers in corrections. You know, now we in some counties have a 70% vacancy of correctional officers. And we want to do more and more and more and we are doing more and more. Without any question, there are three bodies here. There's a governor, there's a house and the Senate and everything, and everybody's got their own mix of all kinds of different things that they want. Without any question, we're trying to do those pay raises. We're trying to do the pay raises to the, you know, child protective workers and on and on and on. And we just proposed a mega, mega, mega amount of pay raises to folks within the state to be able to do exactly what you're talking about, sir. You know, there'll always be, long, long, long after I'm gone, there'll always be a litany of stuff that people say they want to do. But now, let me, let, let me make this just this simple. I want you to listen real closely because this idea of we don't want to be Kansas is absolutely just floated to you as some level of poison, you know, that, that does not make a thread of sense. Not a thread of sense. Dave, come here and tell them about Kansas real quick. We did a lot of, <clears throat> we did a lot of research about Kansas because it is brought up frequently with respect to states cutting their income taxes. In 2012, the governor of Kansas proposed some uh, very large tax cuts, and along with that, though, <clears throat> he proposed some raises of some other taxes and some cuts in the budget. The legislature decided to not raise the other taxes, not cut the expenses in the budget, but they went ahead and passed the tax cuts. So they didn't pass what the governor had proposed, but the governor did sign the bill. <clears throat> On top of it, and this is the thing that, that really just was kind of mind boggling, Kansas decided, that very same legislature, that they would exempt all the LLCs and all what we call pass-through entities, which are generally one-person businesses where people have an LC, like a rental property business, or a doctor, or a lawyer, or a CPA firm, they exempted all of them from tax totally. 100%. 330,000 taxpayers, they zeroed out completely and totally. So they zeroed out 330,000 taxpayers on their own, completely, very big surprise. They didn't raise the other taxes that the governor asked them to raise because he'd run numbers and say you need to raise those taxes to make this plan work. And they didn't cut the expenses in the budget. On top of that, they didn't do what we're doing. They didn't create a reserve fund of $700 million that we're creating. We are putting $700 million in a reserve fund to hold to be absolutely sure that three years from now, we are where we hope we run to be. And our projections are good, and we think we will be. So. We learned from Kansas. Everybody learned from Kansas. And if you want to learn more, there's actually a Wikipedia page called Kansas Experiment. And everything that I just cited you came in part from reading about what Kansas did 10 years ago. So it's a good question, and it's one we all ought to learn from, and we did learn from it. Hold on, just, just, oh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, so before you got here, our Secretary of Revenue was talking about $700 million set aside should, you know, the government shortfalls. So should the tax cut pass in a few years from now, we find out that it's not sustainable, what do we do then? Because I don't see it being done. Well, 
you know, I don't know how to continue to answer this same question, you know, other than just to say, at the end of the day, if that's what you're afraid about, you know, you might as well be afraid that that meteorite's going to hit. Because really, when it really, when you really step back from this, and it's a legitimate concern and question, and it's what the exercise we went through. But today, in the state of West Virginia, you've got a budget of about 4.7 or 4.8 billion dollars, and you have revenue in the state of West Virginia today of 6.4 billion dollars. Literally, if you discount that revenue for energy prices and you discount that revenue for a recession and everything, you still end up with way more money, way, way more money than you need to be able to do what we're talking about here. At the end of the day, if you put our numbers, we ran our numbers at zero growth. Do you really believe if, you, if you're the lowest income tax in all the states all around you that you'll have zero growth? Of course you won't. You'll have substantial growth. But, but we put in zero growth, the most conservative numbers that you can possibly, possibly put in. Now let me just tell you this and just make it just really simple. Here's the whole deal. You know, when we were going down the path before, you know, uh, machinery and inventory stuff or whatever it may be on that, basically you were giving ungodly amounts of money to people that were companies from out of state that were absolutely doing really good in the state of West Virginia. Really, really good. I said to you before, from my company's standpoint, it would have meant $10 million to me. And I said, don't do it. Because I know it is not the best thing for us. It's not the best thing for your counties and everything else. Now, if we, if we miss on this right here, let me just make it this simple. For every one of you, let's just pick somebody, somebody in the room. Son, come here. Can you come here? I love it. The fact, no, no, no. Come, I like your hat. Come here. <laughs> now, just imagine, just for a second, that this fellow's, you know, whatever he was doing, that he was earning $50,000 a year. Okay? Now, I'm going to make this so simple, it's unbelievable. You know, there's a bagazine. What's your name, sir? Noah. Noah? Okay. Okay, Noah. Now, you, you don't bring any high waters on me today. <laughs> all right, now, just listen. Listen. But with all that being said, let's just say Noah's income was $50,000. And Noah's in a 6% tax bracket. And we're going to cut Noah's taxes in half. And we're going to, and Noah's going to have $1,500 that he can put in his pocket tomorrow. And he can do with it what he chooses to do with it. And all of y'all the same. And I, and I don't have $1,500, but, but no, this would be like me just handing you this money. Okay? Now, you decide what you want to do with that money. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'm telling you, we are so on rock solid ground as far as the services and growing budget and not being Kansas, it's unbelievable. But if Noah says, no, I don't really want to do that, then what you are doing, and you best better listen to me, you're opening the, opening the floodgates on every pet project known to man. And we'll spend the money. We'll spend the money in government as sure as I know my name. Noah won't have his money. You won't have your money. Absolutely, it will not drive one ounce of additional growth here. And this is that chance. And that's what we're talking about. Now, we can debate it all day long. 
But at the end of the day, I believe Noah having the money is a heck of a lot better than Charleston having the money. That's what I think. Because Charleston will find a way to spend it. I don't care what on God's earth the amount is. If it's $1,000,000 trillion, we'll spend it. And it literally, we will spend around five times and we will awaken to the fact that growth didn't happen. Absolutely, we have the opportunity to make things happen over and over. With growth, roads get fixed. With growth, schools get bigger. With, with growth, education absolutely morphs into better and better and better. With growth, the stores are filled downtown. Every publication in the land says you want growth, cut your personal income tax. Every single one in the land says exactly that. And we got a decision to make, don't we? To me, I know I'm dead on the right path. I'd love to set up a booth out here and say, we got a billion, seven hundred million dollars. Let's just pass money out here. You want some, you want some, you want some. Let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. And then my term's up. I can make you so happy it's unbelievable. And then my term's up. And West Virginia is still just spinning its wheels. We're not going to become Kansas. Now, I can't give you my money. <laughs> Noah, thank you, buddy. I'm proud of you in every way for all you do. Go sit down. beneficial to you, is that correct? It would be extremely beneficial. Let me, let me say this, and, and I'm not an expert, okay? And I, I don't ever, ever have any problem with telling people I'm not a superstar at this. And, and, and all I can really do is stay at 100,000 feet. You know, daycare is, you know, a necessary part of all of our lives now because because really and truly, you know, families have a need and then families are stressed with their dollars and everything and it becomes, it becomes laborious on you beyond belief because what you want to do is you want to be able to attract and, and you're competing against, like you, like you said, McDonald's or wherever it may be to get people to come to work. And frankly, to just tell you straight up and be perfectly honest, Every single business all across this state is competing right now to try to get somebody to come to work. You have some people that just absolutely are not going to come to work no matter what you do. 
And, and either they've lost hope or they're sort of down on their luck or they may not be good people or good workers or whatever it may be. And, and so you've got a percentage of workforce that's just not going to come to work. Now, with all of that, we're going to continue to try to get people to come to work and all that kind of stuff and entice and do everything we possibly can because I'm a real believer. Biblically, God thinks work is super important to all of us. Now, but with all that being said, no matter what we do, if we think we're going to move the needle and, you know, we're going to move the needle whoosh like this and all of a sudden all kinds of those folks are going to just find hope and whatever it may be and come to work, you know, you're kidding yourself. You're going to move the needle like this. And we're going to continue to try to move the needle like that. But the reality of what I'm telling you is doesn't matter if you're a gas company or you're McDonald's or you're the daycare or whatever it may be. We're all competing for almost the same people, aren't we? Now, how do we fix this? You've got to have people come to West Virginia to live. For God's sakes of living, we've got to grow population. We have needs for workers everywhere. You've got to grow population. Now, say what you want, but when you grow population, the roads, the schools, everything starts happening and getting better. But you have got to be able to let me put in Noah's hands real live money and then let Noah do with it because then Noah's third cousin that lives in Kansas will come here and live. We have to have young people. We're an older state and we've got a lot of illnesses in West Virginia. Literally, we have got to grow young people. Our schools. That's what we got to do. Yes, ma'am. Funding for the daycare. You think she needs more money to pay the staff. There, there's, there's no I mean, how you increase the funding is you put, you put a level of importance on it that is beyond what we maybe have today. There's such as money. That's exactly right. As, I mean, if, if, if at this point in time, throughout all of our legislature, a number one priority was daycare we would put dollars, additional dollars in daycare that would make your lives a thousand times easier. And right now, we are, we are, I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating, we are struggling. Um, it's especially with, I mean, my daycare center is on Wheeling Island. We have a lot of subsidy families, so we rely on what is sent to us. No, I, I get it. I get it a thousand percent. I, Sure, sure. I'm not I'm not just saying this. I just don't I don't say stuff to just be saying it. For God's sakes of living, you know, I'm 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 the guy that did say make education our centerpiece. I'm the guy that is a coach. I'm the guy that literally goes and gives up what little bit of free time I have to be with kids. You don't need to get me on board. I'm there. I'm always there. Anything and everything we can do to make things better for our kids going forward and through whatever means it may be and from an education standpoint, I'm there. Are you waving at me? And, and man, please forgive me. I can't hear worth a dupe. And, you know, and I'm, I'm, when I'm, when I'm, I'm trying to hear, okay? Have you got any more questions about anything? Snooky, congratulations. Thank you for the service that you've given us in every way. God bless you in every single way. And what an incredible family. Your contributions to this state are off the chart. And you don't need told that. But thank you for all you do for all this nation and all of us all the time. And 
anybody wants to come up and say hi to baby dog, I'll get out of the picture and y'all can say hi to baby dog. God bless you for coming. Thank you.